John, I have something to ask you. William Wilberforce, by how you've grown since I've seen you last. A mere boy, playing in these very fields. Those days feel so distant from me. How often I wish I could return into that boundless space I harbored as a child. Now it seems I'm stumbling, constantly strained, constantly being pulled back by the will of God. This is what I've come to see you about, John. I feel such an overwhelming sense of wrong is being displayed in this world, and I can't continue this way without doing something. God has not called you to fix our world. You will never find contentment in trying to improve all of the wrongs and injustices that present themselves. Your only hope is in Christ, Jesus Christ, the one who died to save our world from all of its wrong. He died to save foolish men, foolish men like me, from their foolish deeds. Then why am I here? Why has God placed me in Parliament with a dazzling career? And yet, so much discontentment. You are a fierce and brilliant young man, William. Don't let that fire go to waste. God has called you here with a purpose, a plan for you, William. God has called you to glorify him. You must take action. God Almighty has set before me two great objects which seem to pull on my heart. The reformation of morality and the suppression of the slave trade. John, do you think he's calling me to abolish the slave trade? I wouldn't be the one to know. Yes, you would. If, if I'm to do this, I need your help. I can still see the faces of those slaves, beaten, tormented, sick with the stench of the ship, torn away from their homes and families. William, I can do nothing to help you, but you must do all that is in your ability to abolish the slave trade. You must use your eloquent words and speak before crowds of thousands of people to help and free those innocent men, women, and children. William, God has called you according to his purpose, and if his purpose for you is to abolish this hateful tradition, then let nothing hinder your action. of the slaves in the West Indies. I confess, in my own opinion, this is the most wretched part of the whole subject. So much misery condensed in so little room is more than the human imagination can conceive. I will not accuse these merchants. I will allow them. Nay, I believe them to be men of humanity. It fills up for the enormous extent of magnitude and evil that distracts people from individual cases. I verily believe the wretchedness of one three hundred Africans starred in the ship could be brought before the review. As remained within the sight of the African merchant, that there's not one among them whose heart would bear it. Let anyone imagine to himself six or seven hundred of these sufferers playing two and two, struggling under every kind of wretchedness. How can we bear to think of such a thing as this? This man is out of his mind! We cannot abolish the slave trade! You've got an economic crisis! Yeah. Yeah. You may choose to look the other way, but you can never again say you did not know. Did we need to? You all are entirely aware of the horrors of the great British slave trade. Give us now for What are you doing? What are you doing? Be impacted with that one great friend. Honor of reputation! Is your reputation more important than the lives and welfare? The freedom of innocent people who is being mistreated because of our greed. These miserable sufferers, loaded with chains, oppressed with disease and wretchedness, are forced to act by the terror of the lash and sometimes by the actual use of it. Besides, hear the man out. Death, at least, is a sure growth of evidence, and the proportions of deaths will not only confirm 
but as possible will aggravate our suspicion of their misery in the transit. It is the true duty of every man to promote the happiness of his fellow creatures to the utmost of his power. I beseech you, member of the house, to abolish the wicked practices of the slave trade. I can no longer ignore it. Father, I must admit this great anxiety weighing on my shoulders. God, you have created my husband William with a purpose, with a meaning, and you will not allow that drive to go to waste. If it is your will that William would be successful in abolishing the slave trade, that you would guide his thoughts, his words, his actions, that you would soften the hearts of the parliament officials as they hear his words, and that you would stir in their hearts a desire for justice. For Thomas Clarkson, Hannah Moore, and the many abolitionists working alongside William out of love for the African people, that you would guide us and give us the strength we need to give you glory. Any work? Is it finished? A note, Clarkson. Oh, that God may grant us victory today. It's from Parliament. It's over. All, all of these long hours, painful endurance with no victory or end in sight. The Lord has granted us and the African people victory in His name. Does Wilberforce know? Yes, but he is quite ill. He hasn't long we fear. Wilberforce has accomplished his purpose. He is giving God glory unto the last. William Wilberforce was one man who, with the assistance of countless other dedicated, fierce men and women, used his God-given talents to free the enslaved and glorify his Heavenly Father. In the Bible it says, For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself.